homestead and welcome back welcome to my new kitchen <laughs> um, actually this is the dining room but I am going to this is seems to be the best spot to be able to film my cooking videos um, unless I need the stovetop or anything like that there's just no good area like the other place I had an island where I could put the camera on the other side and be able to have the whole countertop um, there's just not one that like that here in this house so we're gonna go ahead and use the dining room so it, I took a couple weeks off and we got all settled in and moved in and getting our feet on the ground and feeling good. Um, so I wanted to come back and share a gluten-free recipe. Now um, I've shared this before in the past, but um, I have not made a video tutorial on it. Um, probably did on in stories on Instagram, but not for my YouTube channel. So. Um, we're going to have pizza tonight, and I get asked this a lot on making a gluten-free pizza dough, and so I thought, what a great way then to share a video on it, so that if I get asked that anymore, I can just say, oh, I made a video, here's the recipe. Um, so I'm going to show you today how I do a gluten-free pizza crust. Now, um, one thing to remember, and I always say this, is not all gluten-free, all-purpose flours are the same. Um, and so they're not gonna give you the same tasting product. There are different ones that are grainier and just different things. For me, the best all-purpose gluten-free flour that I have found is Cup for Cup. And I buy mine on Amazon in a 25 pound bag, so in bulk, and then I store it in a Gamma Seal food grade bucket. Um, and that usually lasts me a couple months. Everything but breads, I use Cup for Cup, and that has just been the best flour that I can find. Um, but feel free to use whatever gluten-free flour you have on hand. Just know I highly recommend Cup for Cup in most of my recipes. Okay, so what I have in this bowl is just three cups of all-purpose gluten-free flour, which I use Cup for Cup. And I also have, um, just proofing right here, three-fourths a cup of warm water, one tablespoon of active dry yeast, and one tablespoon of sugar, just granulated sugar. You could use honey if you prefer. So I'm just gonna set that aside and let that get nice and warm and fuzzy. Adding to my flour, I'm gonna go ahead and add in two tablespoons of granulated sugar as well. <clears throat> so that'd be an additional. I'm gonna add a half of a teaspoon of baking powder and one teaspoon of salt. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just give that a stir to mix everything all in. Okay, next I'm going to go ahead and add in one tablespoon of oil. So I use olive oil or avocado oil. Um, I don't use vegetable oil or canola oil in any of my cooking anymore. In fact, I don't even buy it. So I highly recommend something like an olive oil or avocado oil or something like that. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and measure out here one tablespoon. And then I have here just measured out a half a cup of warm water and I'm gonna add that to it. Now the really cool thing about this recipe is most pizza doughs you have to let it rise. We are using a yeast in this recipe but you don't need to do a rise time. So as soon as you make it, you can set it in the fridge and, and um, wait until you're ready or you can use it right away and that's what I love about it. It's a quick, easy thing. Um, okay, and so now I'm going to go ahead and pour in my yeast mixture that I had over there proofing. And I'm gonna to use my spoon to mix this all in until I can't mix it anymore with the spoon. Then I'm gonna go ahead and use my hand to make sure that it is evenly incorporated. Okay, so I pretty much can't use any more with the spoon. So now I'll just take my hands and go ahead and squish it all together until all of the flour is mixed into the dough. All right, so I almost got it all. 
Your bowl should be rather clean once you know you've gotten all of the flour into your dough. Your dough should also be very easy to work with. Now, when I first started mixing it with my hands, it was sticky, so some of it is stuck to my fingers. But by the end, once you have all the flour mixed in with it, you should um, not, it should not be sticky to your hand. You should be able to roll it out as in a regular dough. Okay, so here we are, and I have this ball of dough. Now, like I said, you can make this way ahead of time in the morning, pop it in your fridge and just wait till dinner time or lunch time and roll it out, or you can use it right away. There is no rise time in this um, specific recipe, which is great. So since we are close to dinner time here, I'm gonna go ahead and roll this out immediately and put the toppings on it so that it can bake. Okay, so now I have prepared just my pie pan here and I've went ahead and sprayed olive oil all over it. And then I sprinkled a little bit of um, cornmeal on it too. Just a very small little bit. That helps for the crust to come up and not stick onto here and be easily a pie crust. <clears throat> now, you can roll this out onto your table and that'll work just fine. I like to just do it right here on the pan because I'm lazy and I don't wanna clean up flour. So I'll go ahead and um, just flatten it out right here. And then I'll just keep working it and flipping it over and flattening it and doing it right here. That way you just don't have to um, use any extra flour and do a floured surface. You could also, because my pie or my pie pan, my pizza pan is so big, um, I could definitely use a rolling pin right here on this as well to get it nice and thin. Okay, I went ahead and got my rolling pin to make life easier. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It just depends. Um, but like I said, this is all out of just being lazy. <laughs> I don't want to flour my surface and then have to clean up the flour. So I'm doing it this way. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and get it all the way to the edge. Now this pie, um, I keep saying pie pan, this pizza pan is very big. Um, you definitely, if you don't have one this big, you can do thicker crust. I try to go to the inner part of the cir circle of it, um, but you can do it as thick or as thin as you would like it to be. And then I'll just kind of touch up where I need to to make it even. And there you go. Sometimes, like right now, since I really used it, um, I'll just kind of pick it up a little bit and this will help it to not stick also when you're done baking. So I'll just kind of pick up the edges, make sure that it's not pushed too hard into the pan by doing it this way. Um, that step you can skip if you're actually rolling it out like a pizza, pizza dough and not rolling it on your pan. Okay, now you're gonna go ahead and sauce it. And you're gonna spread it all out onto your pizza. Um, this is just a store-bought sauce, but I'm all out of my canned stuff from the garden last year, which tells me that this year I need a lot more on my shelf. Um, so you can just use any pizza, do, uh, pizza sauce. I also have a really quick pizza sauce recipe that uses frozen tomatoes or even just fresh tomatoes that you can whip up. You can use it as spaghetti sauce or as pizza sauce. Okay, and then you add in some cheese and this is just mild cheddar and mozzarella mixed together. And get that nice and sprinkled. And then we went ahead and bought these little mini pepperonis and so we're gonna sprinkle those on top too because the kids are really excited about the mini ones. And so we're gonna go ahead and put those on here. I have a helper that saw me drop one and wanted one. <laughs> okay, and then... This is my helper. <laughs> okay, get down so they can see. Uh, this is real life, guys. Oh, and there is my preheat of my oven. We're at 425 just in time to pop this on in. So now you have a gluten-free pizza that's ready to go. 
in an oven of 425 for about 20 to 25 minutes. You're going to want to watch it once you hit 15 to 20 minutes and make sure that it doesn't get too golden brown. But simple, easy, delicious dinner that will please the family. And even my non-gluten-free husband will eat this pizza and loves it just the same and doesn't complain. So that is a win for me. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and give me a thumbs up on um, the YouTube page here and subscribe so you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. And we'll see you next time.